Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome to The Transcript. Stay tuned till the end of the episode for updates on GSA. Announced Monday, a once soaring flying squirrel trafficking ring has been busted in Florida. Poachers allegedly made a small fortune, conservatively estimated to be at least one million U.S. dollars, by trapping and internationally selling said rodents. Seven people have been charged in connection with this crime. They face a combined 25 felony charges in connection with the incidents, with more arrests pending. Tuesday, a judge ruled in favor of allowing grand jurors in the Breonna Taylor case to speak out, meaning jurors will be allowed to speak out about the proceedings in the case against the police officers anonymously or publicly. In a documentary that premiered on Wednesday, Pope Francis reportedly backed civil unions for same-sex couples. Francis said, quote, homosexuals have the right to be part of the family, end quote. This has been the first time Francis has expressed approval of same-sex civil unions as Pope. Jesuit priest James Martin praised the Pope's comments as, quote, a major step forward in the church's support for LGBTQ plus people. What's up, guys? Wait, where Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all not ready for this. Hi, I'm Sophie. Welcome to Hamped Up. This week, we look into one of the most rigorous yet decorated sports at NHS, cross country. To do this, we talked to NHS seniors Ari Benjamin and Adele Jordan and NHS sophomore Theo Starr to learn more about how their season's going. How much running are you doing in one week of practice during cross country season? At the beginning of the season, we were getting around 45 to 55 miles a week. But now that we have more races, we dropped it down a little bit to 35. Did not having an outdoor track season this past spring have an effect on training for this fall? It was tough to not have an outdoor season, especially because we had such a great senior class last year and it was hard to not have a final season with them. But summer training for cross country is a really important aspect of it. It can really make or break your season. And it was actually pretty helpful to just start piling on the miles a couple months early. How has the adjustment been from last year since you guys graduated such an impactful senior class? Every year, we get a little bit scared that we're not gonna be as powerful in Western Mass as we were the previous year. But every time we just have the new senior class and everyone else on the team just steps up and really, really grinds out their training to keep the Northampton distance runner What's the biggest difference from last year and this year, racing-wise? Well, last year we had probably around 10 meets and four state meets where it's huge. It's all around the state. You're racing against everyone. It's a lot more stressful. And this year, it's only small meets. It's only at our home course. And so it's kind of good to get like rested at our home course. But we run in four waves, so we can like stay far apart when running. And I'd say the waves are the biggest difference. We know it's different this year. Do you still like it as much? Well, personally, I peaked as a runner last year for sure, and I didn't train hard enough over the summer. But I do like that it's less stressful with less state meets, but state meets were also the best part. So I'd say last year was definitely more fun in every way. If the same condition this year happened next year, would you consider quitting or staying on the team? If they're the same, I will probably manage the team and then I'll practice with them sometimes, but no meets, just kind of doing my own thing, running, getting in shape when I can. But if we're back to normal, like last year, I'll probably continue. You are a senior and this is your first season of cross country, but you've also been a decorated runner in past track and field seasons. How are you feeling so far about this cross country season? I really love it so far just because I always ran track and I always heard about how fun cross country was. In 
cross country is a really nurturing environment with a lot of really great people. With this being your first season, are you and the team running into any team chemistry problems? When we can't do the team bonding activities that we would normally do, and especially since this is my first season with the team, I have not really gotten to know everyone on the team. And since we're divided into pods, you really get to know and bond with your pod, but it's hard to bond with the whole team. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. Tune in next week when we look into the girls' soccer team. Hey everyone, over the past few years, van life has gained popularity both in the US and abroad. This week, we sat down with two young van lifers who talked about their experience and how they found their creative career. My name is Brandon Evans. I am from Washington, D.C. I'm currently located in Maryland. I live in a 2003 Toyota Sienna. I've been doing it for about three and a half years, actually, and I don't plan on stopping. When I was in middle school, I would just look on YouTube and I stumbled on a on a uh, van life video and I'm, I was curious about it and I think ever since then um, I've wanted to try it out and it wasn't until I left my aviation career um, at the age of 25 I realized I was working so much just to pay for rent but I just said you know what I have a better chance of traveling in a van than I do you know uh, working for an airline and um, just purchased a van I actually I became a firefighter um, traveling and fighting forest fires that way. I just got addicted to it. I loved it. I loved the freedom, the fact that I could save so much money that way. So what I wasn't prepared for was the judgment. Um, when people would meet me, um, before they would even get to know me, they would all automatically assume uh, maybe something's wrong with this guy. You know, maybe he's like down, down on his luck or something. And it, the opposite was true. I actually had a mentor and the best advice that he's ever given me was, um, you're at an age where People are going to keep trying to tell you or keep trying to convince you how to think and what to do, but you already know what to do, what you want, what you like. Um, if, you're, if there's anything you feel like you need to do, just do it. My name is Mary Ashley Crow. I go by Mac and I travel full time with my husband, Owen, and our cat, Luna. This is what it looks like outside of our door right now. We've currently been on the road for about four and a half years. My parents, are probably our origin story as far as the idea for something like this. They went on the road post-college just with some hand-me-down camping gear before my dad's first assignment in the military. But I think that uh, when Owen and I started dating in college, we just kind of had uh, just like a passion for traveling and exploring. And I brought that story up of my parents and Owen was like, we need to do that. It was like three days after I graduated, we hit the road with just a tent and my Honda Element. Ultimately, because uh, we were just on our savings account, we ran out of money and had to come off the road. And gosh, it was like less than a month later, we had an apartment, we had desk jobs. And it was about two years later, we just were like, what are we doing? We put a date on the calendar and that was the day that we left. Um, and that was four and a half years ago. Um, Owen and I are both designers and we have a design business together. And in addition to all of that, we also do freelance photo and video work. And that is the kind of stuff that's honestly come on since getting on the road. But I think that the most surprising thing about traveling full time is that we have come to realize that the people are the most important thing about our travels. And a lot of them are people that will be with us, I can confidently say, for the rest of our lives. I think that what's important, if you are unsure with what you want to do with your life, is to not settle for anything. Not settle for something that doesn't make you happy work-wise. Don't settle for a place that doesn't make you happy living-wise. There's a million and one things that you can do with your life. Just, just don't settle and always place a priority on happiness because as long as you do that, you're going to be pointing yourself in the right direction. Hi, I'm Lucas Lang and welcome to What's Going On Right Now. Recently, rapper Travis Scott and burger restaurant McDonald's teamed up to make the Travis Scott meal. On the sweet side of town, Dunkin' Donuts and TikTok dancer Charlie D'Amelio made their own drink, the Charlie. This week, I talked to a Northampton resident 
who also has their own meal. But these collaborations seem to have been more for business than anything else. In fact, our interviewee believes that his meal will be better quality for the clients of Moe's. A spokesperson for Duncan said, if they see a drink named after a girl that does the renegade or any other stupid dances well on TikTok, they'll keep coming back and make us money. And you know the saying, we like it when we make money. Tom Cruise tweeted, I love this deal. It has everything I love. TikTok and decently priced coffee. Tell us a little bit about your meal. What should I look? Should I? It's basically a, it's a typical burrito with rice and cheese. Um, and it comes with a, a side of chips and, and sour cream and mayonnaise. Um, and, uh, and it's served with a, um, a bottle of water. Tell us about how you got this meal. Well, I, I, um, I called uh, customer service um, and there was a guy who, who picked up the phone and, and he told me, um, well, he didn't really tell me anything useful, but um, event, I, I yelled at him a lot and, I, and um, he yelled at me a lot. And um, eventually we, um, I got my meal at Moe's, a rip and read meal. Um, and um, you've got to have connections like I do with um, the fine people at Moe's Southwest Grill. Um, I guess I like Moe's because they have a lot of um, good food um, that I like to eat, um, and it's not it's not that expensive like some of these other places. Um, I, and I, I, I don't know, I get to see my friends. What's uh, your first memory of going to Moe's? Um, my first memory is when, when my mom pushed me down the stairs, um, and after that, then we went to Moe's. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Parth. Um, do you, uh, what happened with the meal? You, uh, you, you told me you'd, you'd uh, we, we had, we'd signed a contract and, and, uh, and I could go to Moe's and, and um, order my meal. Yeah, well, I just went to Moe's. I just went to Moe's, Parth. Parth, there's no meal. There's no rip and read meal. Hard. Don't hang up. Thanks for watching. The first Gay Straight Alliance meeting will be on Tuesday, October 27th at 2.30 p.m. The meeting link will be in the Google Classroom with the code ZF3QVAR or in the Instagram bio of at HampHiGSA. You can also email emma.fallon at stew.northampton-k12.us for more questions. Thanks! Transcript.